Action. Action! So there's Kierkegaard trying to find a figure in history who represents the standard of true faith. And he comes across Abraham. And he's studying Abraham's thought process, or the lack thereof, when Abraham is told by a voice that Abraham perceives to have heard, and the voice is commanding Abraham to take Abraham's son up a mountain, hold a dagger over the son's chest, and plunge that dagger into the son's heart and kill the son. Abraham, from Kierkegaard's vantage point, moves through this experience in true faith, never even questioning or doubting the voice and simply obeying the command. Kierkegaard compares this to how a reasonable or normal person would engage this command. And Kierkegaard takes us through four hoops that a reasonable or normal person would have to jump through to get to the same conclusion that Abraham gets through straight away with true faith. Hoop number one is if a reasonable or normal person were to perceive hearing a voice and this voice is saying, go kill your son, and the, the voice is representing that it is divinity or God, Kierkegaard poses the proposition that a reasonable or normal person would ask the question, is this a real voice or am I imagining things? And it might take 10 minutes, it might take 10 years, but a reasonable or normal person, you or I, might agonize for 10 minutes or 10 years as to whether this voice is real or imagined. And on the other side of it, Kierkegaard says, well, maybe the conclusion would be it's real and not imagined. For Abraham, it's not even a nanosecond. In true faith, Abraham has no doubt that this voice is real and not imagined. Hoop number two, a reasonable or normal person would then go and about the task of inquiring as to whether or not this voice is indeed the voice of God and divinity, or perhaps the devil or something diabolical. Yes, it's real, but is it God or the devil? Abraham, in true faith, does not even engage this question. He believes it's real, not imagined, and believes in true faith that it is the voice of divinity. A reasonable person or a normal person might take 10 minutes or 10 years agonizing over whether this is divinity and God or the devil, and on the other side of it might conclude that it is indeed the voice of God. Hoop number three, Kierkegaard proffers the proposition that this might be a real voice, not imagined. It might be the voice of divinity and not the devil, but perhaps divinity itself is not good, but is evil or twisted. Abraham, according to Kierkegaard, Kierkegaard's perspective moves through this third hoop again without batting an eyelash in true faith. It's real, not imagined. It's divinity, not diabolical. And divinity is good and righteous and pure and not evil or twisted or distorted. A reasonable or normal person might take 10 minutes or 10 years agonizing over whether this voice is, although real, not imagined, and although divinity and not diabolical, is a twisted divinity an evil divinity. The final hoop, hoop number four. Kierkegaard wonders whether a reasonable or normal person would engage the possibility that if it's real and not imagined, this voice, and if it's divinity and not diabolical, and if it's an, an authentic, pure, righteous divinity, not a dark, twisted divinity, perhaps this righteous, pure divinity is putting us to a test, and a reasonable or normal person might pose to oneself, I'm being tested. I'm being tested by God. And the right answer is to say, no, I refuse to kill my son. And I want my reward for passing this test. Kierkegaard, studying Abraham, believes that Abraham, once again, doesn't even engage this issue and believes in true faith, that it is real, not imagined. It is divine, not diabolical. It is a righteous, pure, divinity, not a twisted, distorted, dark divinity, and it is not a test. It is a command that must be obeyed. And then Abraham is ready to go through with it. He's got the dagger and he's going to plunge it into the chest of his son. Of course, at the last minute, there's an intercession by this voice which says, no, don't do it. I would like to enjoin you from obeying this command. And that's a different part of the story that we won't engage. But Kierkegaard is fascinated 
that this is perhaps the only figure in history who would sail right through those four hoops, right over those four hoops, and not even engage them. True faith is the guide for Abraham. There is no doubt, there is no skepticism, there is no wondering. You hear a voice, you believe it's real, you believe it's the voice of God, you believe it's not a test, you believe it's pure and right and true, and you act. And Kierkegaard lies in bed at night in fear and trembling, wondering if he can live up to this standard as the only example of true faith being Abraham. Can I go now? A big warm thank you to my beautiful bride, Kate, to our feline Desmond, who knows all the secrets but no, will never tell. I gotta go. Maybe I'll give you a back shot. Wow. Okay, Frank. I love you guys.